Hello, everyone, and welcome to the impact of the COVID-19 on insurance protection workshop. It's hosted by the BIBF from the Insurance Center. My name is Hala Nasib, and I will be your workshop facilitator, etc., for this afternoon. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a background about myself. I have a bachelor's degree from the London School of Economics and the professional qualifications from the UK and the US, the ACII and ALMI. Um, I was previously in an insurance company, Allianz Tecoffel, which is now Medgar Tecoffel, as heading the life insurance department. So my background is mainly life insurance. Um, but for this session, we'll be talking about all lines of business. And currently, I'm a full-time lecturer here at the BIBF. So today, for the workshop that you all have joined, we'll be talking about the impact of the COVID-19 on insurance protection. If you have these lines of or these covers policies of insurance, how it will affect you or how it has affected you and the things that you need to know in order to um, continue your insurance. So let's look at the objective. We want to understand the effect of the COVID-19 on your insurance policy cover. Okay, so we want to understand the effect of it on your insurance policy cover. Mainly, we will be looking at four lines of business, which are as follows. So we'll be looking at medical insurance, life insurance, travel, business interruption. So the first concern with the corona is how it was going to affect my life and my insurance policies. And a lot of insurance companies, they were running towards making changes, announcements, and things like that for, to reassure their consumers okay, or their clients with regards to their cover. So for us here, what we want to understand is for these types of policies, if you have them, how is your cover affected? What are the things that you should be looking at? How are they going to operate in light of the corona, the COVID-19? And things, anything else that's relevant to the policy cover, okay? And of course, finally, the steps that you should take when you're communicating with your insurer. So we will start with medical. Are your medical expenses covered? Understanding the applicable exclusions in light of the covid 19 and in similar pandemics the role of the government which is really important uh, the key factor deciding factor which is affecting the insurance policies and then we have the importance of life insurance the main question that we keep getting or i keep getting is should i cancel my savings policy what are the things that i should consider and how to read the fine print at the same time, also to understand the exclusions and how they apply at the times of crisis. We have also travel insurance. Are your medical expenses covered? And other risks, delayed departure, trip cancellation, will these be covered or not? And finally, of course, we will look at business interruption. If any of you have a business currently and you're wondering whether this is covered or not covered or how your insurance will operate in light of this. All right, so let us start looking at the affected lines of business. How are they affected? We look at medical first, of course, which was the first concern for everyone or anyone who is suffering or and basically the entire world is dealing with it right now. And most of us have medical insurance policies. So the question is, will my medical expenses be covered? Then we have life insurance. The question that everybody's asking is, if I die, God forbid, will my family receive the life insurance proceeds? Will my family receive the life insurance proceeds? Will I receive an income payout if I lost my job? especially if I have an income replacement policy. And then we have business interruption. Will my business losses be covered? So here we're looking at if you have the inflow of customers that you used to have before now doesn't exist anymore because of this. 
because of the government closures, are they covered or are they not covered? Can you claim for your lost profits or not? And travel, will my cancel curtailed holiday expenses be covered? Curtailed, we mean here if the trip was cut short. Okay, so for anyone, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat and I'll try to answer them. If they are a lot of questions, maybe we'll take a five minute break just to tackle the most important questions. So for us to understand, first of all, how the corona is operating, how the situation has evolved, we need a little bit of definitions because these are the definitions that will determine whether I will be covered or not. Of course, for uh, medical doctors who are joining us, these are maybe our words that you know them very well by heart, but for other people, us commoners, we need to know what each one of these words mean. So we start with the definition of outbreak. Now with the corona, it started, as everybody knows, started in Wuhan, the city of Wuhan in China, as an infection or some, like people started thinking about the disease, they were just hearing stories and it was only centered around there for like a couple of weeks. So at the time, when it was starting in Wuhan here, it is a sudden occurrence of something unwelcome, such as war or disease. So it was just an outbreak. When it was just in Wuhan, slowly, of course, after a couple of weeks, it started spreading all over China. It became a widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in the community at a particular time. And this is where we will call it an epidemic. Okay, an epidemic, because it's moving from a small number into a larger number, small relative to China, and then moving to a larger number. And then finally, in a few months, I think from December till February, I remember that week very well, it, the disease was starting to, to pop up everywhere around the world, literally like all the way in Australia, Latin America, here in the GCC. And it was finally then when it started, when the WHO finally declared it as a pandemic. And when, uh, what is a pandemic? A pandemic of a disease is prevalent over a whole country or the world. So finally, Corona moved from being an outbreak all the way to being a pandemic, okay? Why do we need to know these definitions? Because here our policies are different. Some policies will cover if it's only an outbreak, they will cover if it's only an epidemic, or they will cover only if it is a declared a pandemic. Okay, so we need to know the differences between all of these definitions. So currently the WHO declared that it is a pandemic. So it is on the latter category. Now when it comes to medical insurance, things that we need to look at, of course, is the incurred medical expenses. Now, when I'm thinking about whether I will be covered or not covered, I need to break down the elements of cover that I am looking at. Elements of cover that I am looking at. So we have, we have the, there, there are certain elements when it comes to the first question is the cost of the test. Now for some countries, the cost of the test is borne by the government. For some, the individuals have to bear it themselves. And for some, it is still a question mark who is covering it. Is it the insurer in this case? So of course, with the corona, the first thing we have is the cost of testing. You see, might have seen over social media some celebrities, they started doing the test at their own home, private companies providing the testing facility for them because they don't want to go to the public hospitals and get tested. There could be overcrowding as an issue. They are more likely to contract the disease there. So our first concern is the cost of the test. Then we have the cost of treatment cost of treating the, um, the when, when you get infected with corona, God forbid. So what are the elements that we have here? We have the outpatient, 
someone who will come and just go. We know that they have corona. They don't need actual medication or treatment. They just need, for example, bed rest and then come back again and get tested just to see if the result is positive or negative. So this is the first category, outpatient, which is also an indicator of how strong is the disease in attacking the body. Okay, as you see here in Bahrain, for example, when they release the results or the daily update of the cases, they put for you that cases that require treatment is this number, which kind of, I think it stands at 180, something like that. Those cases are the ones that are, will be considered inpatient because they will require treatment. They require a hospital bed. They need to be hospitalized. We need staff, personnel around them, medical staff, to monitor their case all around. We need to give them a medication, some form of medication to reduce the symptoms of the virus. And of course, if they are in a really critical condition, we will need medical equipment in order to treat their case. Medical equipment, such as the ventilators and things like that. Okay, and of course, the follow-up visits is the final aspect, just to make sure after two weeks, are they doing fine? Are they clear of the disease or not? All right, so this is the aspect of the treatment. And of course, lastly, we have time off work to recover. Now, whether they're hospitalized or they are outpatient, they will need some time off work to recover. So which part of your medical policy covers this? These are the areas that you need to look at. Okay, obviously I'm not speaking on behalf of any insurance company. You still need to go back to your insurer, check, but these are the questions that you can ask them with regards to your cover. The thing about the cover, how much does it cost? Like for example, in the US, treating a child with only a mild illness will require a cost of around, um, especially through telephone, it'll require around $32. It can range from $19 to $56. For an adult, $17. However, to hospitalize a person, it will be $14,000. $366. So the cost of the medical expense is important because this will determine whether the insurer will cover either all of it, part of it, or none of it. And obviously, as you've seen in the US currently, the situation is that they don't have enough, they, they're having an issue of overcrowding, lack of testing, things like that, which doesn't enable them to tackle this disease. Okay, so you, when you, if you have a medical insurance policy, you need to check about these elements of the cost, whether they are covered or not. So now to the key question, what is covered and what is excluded from all of this? So Bahrain policies, most of the insurance companies, they will have this exclusion clearly labeled out which is here, you see it in red. Officially, any pandemic outbreak epidemic that is named by the WHO or national law, okay, it's recognized as an outbreak epidemic or pandemic is clearly excluded. Okay, it is clearly excluded. So it means that for your medical insurance policy, this cover will not be provided at all. Okay, it's clearly excluded here. So the, the good idea about it is that even though it's excluded here in Bahrain, this all the cover is provided by the government. However, in other countries, the situation might be a bit different. Some health insurance policies, they do not exclude this cover expressly. When we say expressly, we mean it's clearly lined out that it is excluded. Okay, and of course, since there are a, a variety or a range of policies, the insurer will have to look at whether these exclusions apply or not and subsequently inform their customers, okay? So it's up to you as well to be informed. This is one of the exclusions right now as an exercise. You can pick up your medical policy, check whether this exclusion, which is usually at the end of the policy, is included or not. 
And of course, insurers have to look at whether such an exclusion is enforceable because some laws they require, they, it's not a requirement, is that this is not a valid exclusion. So for in the, in the UAE, they have this practice is that some exclusion clauses, they will, not held, they will not be held viable. So even if you have them in the policy, it means the insurer has to pay the claim for you. Okay, any questions? Feel free to type them up. So let's look at other sample exclusions from other areas of the world. Okay, so what we have, um, I've took a sample from Indian policies. Of course, the situation is a different now. The government has instituted a law that all the um, corona testing is, um, is going to be borne by the government. But this is just to give you an idea of the type of clauses that you can see in your policy. So we have the exclusion list, of course, the first one, which we discussed earlier, officially by the WHO and or national law recognized epidemic pandemics. This is the typical exclusion that you could see. We have another one, which is if you are not hospitalized for at least 24 hours. So here, the way this exclusion works is that if you are hospitalized for more than 24 hours, you are covered. If you are not hospitalized, which is equal to outpatient treatments, as we said, just going to the hospital and not staying there, then these costs will not be covered. Okay, so here there is a requirement for hospitalization, otherwise cover is not provided. Then we have if you are going for a planned treatment, if you are going for a planned treatment. So if you're suffering from a cough, respiratory disease, breathlessness, flu over the past few days, and you plan to take treatment for it, then your policy might not cover you even if it results in symptoms for coronavirus disease and infection. So if you planned a treatment, you have a plan for a treatment, and there is somewhat of a link for the coronavirus, all of it will be excluded. Okay. And then we have if you contract the disease within the policy waiting period, this is applicable for if you just bought the policy. Some policies, they have a waiting period, which starts from the date when you purchase the policy the date that you purchase the policy, for example, three, 30 days from the date of purchase, these th first 30 days, you will not get cover for anything. And usually this is found in insurance policies because they wanna reduce the chance of people buying the policy in order to get insurance, okay? Just, you know you have a disease and you buy the policy for that disease. The whole idea is we want a balanced portfolio to protect you against unplanned risks, okay? And last one we have, you or a family member recently traveled to affected countries. Now, there has been a period of time where everybody stayed at home, but now we, as, we've see, as we are seeing is that people are starting, their travel is opening up again, and maybe some people or a lot of people are considering the travel opening up again, they want to travel, so if the policy contains such an exclusion, then you will not be covered if you contract the disease while you travel, travel or a family member has recently traveled. Okay, so the, the question is, the main point is, you have to check with your insurer with details whether the policy covers the coronavirus or not. As a start, take your policy, look at the exclusions that are there. If it's any one of these exclusions, then it's automatically not covered. All right. So let's go move on to the next part. So things that for us that we need to check is you have to know the coverage rules for testing. This varies by country, from country to country, because some countries, they don't have any regulations for testing. It means if you want to know if you have the virus or not, you can come for a test, but it will be at your expense. You have to pay for it. 
similar to what is going on, for example, in the UK, they don't want to have an overcrowding issue. So they're saying if you just feel like your symptoms are really severe, then come to the hospital. So you have to know the coverage rules for testing. Here in Bahrain, Alhamdulillah, what we have is that you can get tested at the government and the like the government facilities, drive through, and there are also now a number of private hospitals for a fee that you can pay and get tested to know whether you have the virus or not. So the availability of this will change, will affect whether your medical insurer can cover for this or not. Okay, because the impression we have right now, if you are, if your government is not providing for it, you will pay for medical insurance to provide for such coverage. All right, that's the presumption here. Find out if your insurer is waiving other out-of-pocket costs. So here, taking the example of the private hospital, if you're going to go get tested at the private hospital, do you have to pay also for the deductible, the small fee at the front desk for getting the test? or will the entire test be covered by your insurer? You have to find out these small details, whether it's covered or not, and take advantage of telehealth if available. In Bahrain, we have the 444, You can call them, tell them your symptoms, and then they will advise you whether you need to get tested or not. Recently, maybe there has been a lot of pressure because of the rise in cases, but this is an available option for you because you get access to speaking to professionals who will guide you on your the testing process. Next, you have to fight surprise medical bills. And this is relevant, especially for policies where you are getting treatment for something. And at the same time, you find out that there is corona, you have corona. So maybe you're going for a normal cough and it turns out you have corona and you didn't show any symptoms before. So will it be considered as corona diagnosis or will it be under the just cough and fever and you need to pay for that? So you have to understand the relationship between these two, if you have these two diagnoses at the same time. And of course, avoid gaps in insurance coverage if you lose your job here in Bahrain. Most of the policies, they will cover you if you are an employee, but if you lose your job, God forbid, because of the way the economy is going, then you have to try to avoid these gaps. Speak to your insurer direct, directly if you can arrange for individual medical cover. Okay, so these are the things that we have to look at to consider when we are understanding the whole process of the corona in relation to medical insurance. Now for the role of governments, the thing with the corona is that it's, it's, it's not exposed, but it's kind of shed light on how the government is handling the whole corona situation. And there is large mounting pressure on how they should have handled the entire situation. So what are the expectations that people place on the government? As a normal individual, if we break it down and put it into words, what are the expectations? So of course, the first one is information dissemination. We rely on our government to give us information of the number of cases, um, and how many tests are being conducted, where are the places we can go, we cannot go. So there is a large expectation on government to track this, provide us information and inform us what is going on in the country. Now for Bahrain, it's a small country, but especially for bigger countries, it is a big deal because you, they want to know how safe is the country at the moment. Next is advice on safety procedures. As we've seen, and especially here in Bahrain, there's like pressure to tell the government to have like a full curfew or a partial curfew what is safe, what is not safe. It's people putting expectations on the government, people putting expectations on the government and that they have to, um, they have to inform us where is it safe and where it is not safe. Okay, and of course we have the testing, which we talked about, testing is, Requir a requirement by 
the people require that the government should arrange for it because they have the facilities, they have the money for it. So there's that expectation as well. As you've seen with the US, huge criticism on the government that they're not doing enough testing. Same issue with the UK as well. So we place our expectation on the government to arrange for this. And here in Bahrain, they've been very transparent about it. They're telling us exactly how it is. And of course, next we have the treatment, the, all of the aspects we discussed earlier, and also for follow-up. So we expect the government to handle this entire cycle or the process from A to Z, from the minute it occurred in the country, the first case, until the follow-up stage. Okay. Now, if the government is not providing for these things, then private medical co insurance cover is expected to take place. And especially here in the GCC, most of the governments are handling this fully in terms of testing, treatment expenses, and leaves from work, which is very fortunate for citizens and residents. But this varies by country, depending on the country's power and resources. Okay, for some countries, they have the power, they don't have the resources. Some have resources, but no power to do this. Okay, so this balance of power, it depends from country to country. I've put here an example for you of how is the medical insurance or how is it playing out in other countries around the world. So looking at the UK, starting as an example, now, in terms of insurance, the Financial Conduct Authority, they have just stipulated some, let's say, just prescriptive guidelines on how they should handle the cover. So they use words like effective, timely, compassionate, uh, compassionate, no delays on treatment, where, where they are placing this kind of burden on the insurers you have to communicate. Now, what, is, what does the communication constitute? There is no detail, okay? The private hospital providing the treatment is required to support the NHS. So you, as an insurer, have to communicate with your customers if it is covered or not. There is no mandatory obligation to cover or not cover. Testing is free in government facilities at the moment, but you need to pay for private tests. There was a discussion between the UK insurers and the regulator to an, whether to enforce that they have to provide cover or not, but the regulator decided not to interfere and make a decision. They're just providing guidance. In the US, the second example, Legislation just passed by Congress, so testing will be free. So at the beginning, there was a lot of discussions whether it is free or not. So testing is free at the moment. So the cost also of the doctor's visit or trip to the emergency room, but the treatment is not. So we have to be careful. Treatment is not free. And at the moment, only what I found from my research are only two insurers who agreed to pay for the customer's treatment cost. So look at the size of the market, the, the, the number of medical insurers in the market, and only two out of that entire number have agreed to pay for customer's treatment costs. We move then to South Korea, South Korea. They did a good job of containing the disease. They still have a small mini cluster outbreaks here and there, but they were able to yani, eradicate the disease at an early stage. So they've conducted 300,000 tests to date free of charge. They're the ones that started with the drive-through testing booths since they were, which was replicated elsewhere as well. Their success relies mainly on the well-funded and efficient system they have of delivering public services. They do have a national health insurance system. You have to pay for it, but for the corona at the moment, the government took care of everything for its uh, nationals and its citizens and residents. Okay, so it's, and then we have Spain. Spain, what they have done is that they have offered they, or they offer universal healthcare system 
and they also offer a private insurance option if you want to expand your cover. And during the pandemic, they've announced that they will nationalize hospitals and private healthcare companies to manage the pandemic better. As you've seen recently, there is news that Spain is opening up again, um, especially for British visitors. They don't have to quarantine anymore. So when we look at these countries, how they compare in terms of each other, comparison next to each other, each country's behavior is completely different. There is no one model for each insurance company <clears throat> or for each country of what is the correct way to do it. But the expectation is still there for medical insurers to cover the gaps. Okay. So with that, we conclude the medical insurance part. Now we'll move on to the life insurance part. For life insurance, what we have is we have the life insurance cover. Maybe you have total permanent disability cover and we have recovery insurance. Okay, sometimes that it gets covered as well. We have also income protection. We will be looking at it, same structure as the medical. Does your policy cover or not? Or what are the exclusions that you need to look at? So first thing is, these are the considerations. So as a customer as well, if you're considering of buying a life insurance policy, you need to look at these kinds of things or these factors. First, the key thing is the rate of infection. How fast is it infecting? As you know, as you know of the R0 number, this ratio, if it is below one, then it means the disease is conquered. The infection rate is much lower from person to person. The higher it is, how many people can one case infect others? Some countries it is really high, some countries it is really low. And then we have, of course, the death rate, how fast it's killing people. The death rate and we've seen here in Bahrain is that the past week, the number of deaths has increased rapidly. Okay, so this will affect also the prices of life insurance. And subsequently, the mortality rate for pricing will be affected as well. So when we talk about mortality rate, is that how long are people expected to live or die or how fast they die in the country? This affects the pricing of life insurance because as you know, we are protecting against the basic risk of death as a start and there are other kinds of covers. Another thing we have to look at is the demographics. The the structure of the country in terms of the age groups, is it a large elderly population? Is it a young population? In Italy, that was one of the things that the people were trying to explain the high deaths in Italy because of the areas where the virus first struck is that it had a large population of retired and elderly people living in those areas where it hit first. So these demographics affect how life insurance operates in the country. And of course, we have the role of government, which we discussed earlier, whether the government is providing for the testing, the treatment, the follow-up or not. Another factor is the overseas travel, which is interesting because at some point, the travel stopped, but now um, economies want to open up. So the overseas travel is going to start again, probably. Okay, like Dubai, they just announced yesterday all the rules if you want to go and visit. And of course, the number of new policies that could be issued during this time and any future underwriting considerations, which we mean here selection of risk. When it comes to insurers selecting risk is that in light of all of these things that are happening, will there be any effect on the underwriting or not. Okay, so when taking all of these factors into place, a life insurer will decide whether to grant cover or not. For you, how is it going to change your policy, the way it operates in light of all of this? All right, any questions, please type them up in the screen and I'll try to reply to you. Okay. 
So when we're looking at the considerations, okay, the considerations, what the question, the main question is for a specific country, especially, what is the expected incidence of COVID-19 of COVID as a proportion of the total population and therefore the number of insured? What is the expected incidence? So it means here, out of the number of people who are infected, how many are going to die? Okay, how many are they going to die, the immortality rate? So the WHO, they make an estimate, it changes every day or every week based on the number of cases and the deaths. 3.4% based on the latest estimate. Of course, this percentage varies by age group, health status, people who have pre-existing conditions, the older population, they all have a higher risk of unfortunately dying from this uh, infection, from an infection, okay, or developing a severe disease. Okay, so for us, we have to look at how fast is the disease spreading at the same time, how, what is the mortality rate? So as you see here in Bahrain, the number went up. Recently, there has been a lot of more deaths than today, we just announced. So there's a higher a mortality rate is rising, okay? Um, another place where you can look at for statistics, a reliable place for statistics if you're interested, is the John Hopkins University. They publish figures as well in line with the WHO. So that's another place to read if you wanna know more information. Here they put statistics and they're comparing the death rates in different countries. But you have to be careful when reading them because there is the issue, first of all, of testing. The number of people testing and the number of people who are being reported. Obviously, if people are not tested, then there are cases are not reported. So there is a miss. The results can be skewed or they will not be full. They will not be the full picture of what is going on, which was the main um, criticism on China because they revised their death rates. They're saying that some figures, they were, not, um, they were not all disclosed at the time. So there are concerns with things like that. Same issue with, I think, was it recently, I've read an article about cases in Thailand. They were expected, Thailand is viewed as one of the countries that controlled the disease. At the same time, there are people who are saying, or there's an opinion, an opposing opinion, is that the disease is still spreading because the number of tests are not enough to detect the disease. So it's giving an image that they have conquered the disease. Okay, so the number of people testing is a very important factor, number of people being tested compared to the population that is there. Okay, more people tested, higher number of chances of detecting the disease, and then here, based on how you want to interpret it. The demographics, which we discussed earlier, the death tends to be higher in older people and people with pre-existing conditions. And of course, the most important part is the healthcare system. We talked about this earlier, the healthcare system. Mortality rates, they may rise. If there are more people who are infected than hospitals, they, are, they might be overcrowded. So you see here in Bahrain, for example, they state the number of operating, the operational capacity, number of hospital beds per population. And this is based on the presumption that not everyone is gonna get infected, only a percent. So the higher number of infections, then the more um, operational capacity that they will need, it could lead to overcrowding and under-resourcing. Okay, and we've seen that it's exposing this in every single country around the world. Now, when we're looking at the underwriting guidelines, how will they change? So let's say you are in one of these groups and you want to apply for uh, life insurance. So how will this affect your coverage? So first thing of first of all, when the when you apply for an application, the insurance company will ask you questions and they will apply guidelines. They will look at where does your case fit into their underwriting policy and the risk selection policy. 
and then they will determine what kind of measures that they will take against you. Okay, so first we see the age and health related guidelines, especially individuals who are 65 and older, those with any underlying comorbid conditions. What is comorbid conditions? Diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, respiratory disorders, any immunosuppressed disorders for any reason, these are all conditions. If you have them or someone has, has them, they're more likely to get the virus and they will, they will struggle through recovery. So another factor is the any individual, regardless of age with comorbid conditions, because as we've seen, corona does not discriminate against any age. It can get to anyone. Okay, so here they will apply some conditions here, require more documents for you. Maybe they will not immediately issue your policy. Then we have healthcare workers. Now this is interesting because healthcare, wor healthcare workers, they will also apply for, med for life insurance. And if they are frontline, then the situation is much different for them compared to others. So what will the um, insurer do is they might give you a questionnaire, an extra form that has a set of questions. If you have undergone testing, then they will require the results of the test. You must be actively at work, which means that you must be in a working in a recognized health facility, which is subject to local governmental health protocols. So working at a recognized medical facility means there are safety procedures associated with your work and there is a minimum standard of care that has to be applied there. Obviously, any disability income products, which we talked about earlier, what are disability income products? If you, are, um, if you buy a policy like that and you get disabled and you cannot work anymore, then the policy will pay you a percentage of your income. So it's like an income replacement policy. And of course, we have relief workers or volunteers working. Again, postpone their cover for 14 days after their return to the home location. This applies especially for bigger countries because Bahrain is small. But other countries, if you are um, a volunteer in a city and then you go back home, once you go back home and apply for insurance, there will be a 14-day waiting period. Okay. Now, when it comes to travel restrictions, this is important because now with travel opening up, we need to understand how the underwriting guidelines will apply. Obviously, anybody who is going for out-of-country travel, regardless of destination, will have to be postponed for 14 days following the return to their home country. So you just come back. After 14 days, you'll look at your application again. There is in-country travel, which applies especially for bigger countries if you're traveling between cities. Again, also postponed 14 days. Future travel restrictions or maybe exclusions, you, this kind of cover will not be provided at all. Okay, especially for anybody who's planning to travel once restrictions are lifted. If you are planning to go on a cruise or a train or through a border or anything like that, then it's also going to be postponed for 14 days. And for lastly, for disability income products, more focus on self-employed applicants and applicants with short waiting periods. Why on these people? Because previously it's linked to your work. Now your work has reduced significantly. So we will need to think or take extra care when we are underwriting such cases. So expect delays when it comes to this kind of cover. Even applicants who have been furloughed for law, it's a term that is used in the UK, especially where the, you are put on leave, mandatory leave, and the government pays a percent of your salary. Okay, just to avoid letting people go from work until the situation gets better. 
So in the UK, currently, there are people who are on furlough at the moment. Okay, and so for anybody who has received a diagnosis who is positive, then they will be postponed for one month until they recover, and then we'll have to think about reconsidering them again. Why? Because the, we don't know what is the reinfection rate when it comes to corona. We don't know whether the virus ever leaves the system fully. So this lack of information makes the situation uncertain for everyone and even insurers, they will be very careful when it comes to dealing with cases or trying to address cases like this. Okay, so now let's look at the product, life insurance product. So life insurance products are usually broken down into two categories. We have individual or group life insurance and we have, we have also individual or group annuities. Annuities we will not be covering because we don't actually have that in Bahrain at the moment. But we have individual or group life insurance at the moment. And there are two types. There are protection and investment saving policies. Protection policies are usually designed to provide a benefit in case a certain event occurred. Savings, there is an element where you invest that money or that premium into the market to gain or grow your capital. Okay, so our focus will be on the savings now just to see whether I should keep my policy or cancel it. Okay, obviously, if there is a higher, a higher protection element required, then there has to be more underwriting done on this. Okay, so now we go to the key question. Will I be covered? Will I be covered basically, basically on my existing policy or not? So if I will be covered or not, the basic answer is yes. Usually insurers, they do not cancel. Okay, they do not exclude outbreaks, epidemic, pandemics, similar to medical insurance. So that is the good news. However, if you are looking to buy a new policy, you'll need to move fast because the coverage options will start to change now. Maybe there will be tighter restrictions and things like that. Okay, and also there is this expectation with the rise in mortality, like as we see in Bahrain, with more people dying, then it means that the um, premiums, they will be also increasing. So the cost of insurance for you as an individual will go up. So move fast and purchase the policy as soon as possible. But check for all of these things before you buy it. Okay, don't buy it blindly. Now the question is, should you cancel your savings policy? Should you cancel it or not? If there are obviously no clear exclusions, we should ask ourselves these questions. We go through this decision making process and decide. So the first question is, do you have a copy of your policy wording, which is important? Do you have a copy? If you have a copy, take it out, read through it, so you can answer these questions for yourself. If you don't have a copy, first step is to acquire a copy immediately. Okay, acquire a copy immediately. Until then, okay, if you have, once you get the policy wording, read your policy carefully. Okay, read your policy carefully. When you're reading the terms and conditions, you need to see whether these two statements are there. First of all, do you see the word guarantee next to your savings amount? Do you see the word guarantee next to your savings amount? If you see the word guarantee there, okay, we'll move on through the decision tree. If you see it there, okay, so if there is a guarantee on your savings amount, keep your policy, do not cancel it. Okay, this is just my professional recommendation to you. Keep it because your the amount you've put in is guaranteed. However, if 
it is not guaranteed, then you have to check with your insurer, inquire with them. Check with them. Maybe it's better that you cancel the policy, take the amount, okay, receive the existing amount, and maybe upgrade or look at better options. The next thing here that we have to look at, is there a clear exclusion on corona or something similar, as we said? outbreak, epidemic, pandemic. You will not see the word corona, but you see outbreak, epidemic, pandemic. Okay. And if there is a clear exclusion, then you have to explore your options with your insurers, because obviously you took this policy for a number of years. If not, there is no clear exclusion. Keep your policy. You will need it. You never know when you will need it. You bought it for the long term. So here you have to keep it. This is the best advice that I can give you. Okay, so we move on. Any questions? If anybody has any questions, you can type them in the chat. We can look at the now we'll move on to travel insurance and how travel insurance has changed since the corona. Obviously, now with travel opening up, it would be a good idea for us to think about whether we want to travel. Should we get insurance? What will the insurance cover us if we do get the travel policy? Okay, so let's go for travel insurance. So here what we have, again, what are the things that we need to consider? We need to look at medical expenses. There is obviously an element of medical expenses in the cover. And we have delayed departure, okay? So especially this was more relevant for people who, when they just, they book their trips, and they find out on spot that their trip will have to be delayed. Okay, and the same thing also, trip cancellation. Okay, trip cancellation. Whether the trip being canceled, will I get all my expenses, the canceled hotel, canceled taxis, or um, car, um, any car, any car arrangements I've set up, will they be canceled as well? Okay, and obviously the purpose of travel, if it is business or if it is just a vacation for pleasure, all of these will affect whether the claims can be covered or not. At the same time, also the frequency, purpose of travel and the frequency, maybe you need to travel a lot because of work. This is a work requirement, so your consideration will be different. And we have obviously the exclusions, the most important part, exclusions, because exclusions, maybe such a disease will not be covered regardless of what your situation is. Okay, and we have of, of course the last part, which is the future travel element. Okay, future travel aspect. If you're planning on traveling in the future, how will it work? Okay, so let's look at now the travel aspect. So when I'm looking at travel cover, I need to consider before travel, okay, during the travel trip and after the travel trip. Okay, during, before, during, after, it comes after, is that for future trips or whether I am considering the, my claims are already pending and they are with the insurer. Okay, or if any trip I cancel and I'm looking at traveling later in the year when the situation hopefully improves. Let's look at it. So before traveling, now if you're considering with the situation when the country is opening up, before traveling, okay, some insurance policies, they don't specifically exclude. 
So that's the first thing we need to check. They don't specifically exclude the cover. Okay, they don't exclude the cover of the COVID-19 after even after it was named a pandemic. Okay, and the travel cancellation aspect, this goes back to your country. Like for example, in Kuwait, what they're saying is that you're allowed to travel, but it is at your own expense. You will not be expected to be repatriated if you are stuck, if borders closed, etc. Okay, so this depends also on the government. Maybe there will be no travel insurance policy at all. As we've seen recently, there has been statistics that the biggest um, sector that will suffer the most from Corona is the travel sector, where they're suffering losses at 100%, a rate of 100%. Okay, and then we have, now if your trip was scheduled between a specific period. Let's say you've already bought tickets before the situation comes, becomes worse. You bought tickets um, until, for, for example, September. So airlines, what are they doing right now? Is some of them, they're not gonna give you a refund, but what they're doing is that they will, they will give you vouchers as a, mag, as a way for compensating you. They will give you vouchers. And these vouchers, you can keep them and use them later, but what if the airline closes permanently, then you will lose this voucher entirely. At the same time, also, if you rebook the ticket later, because you took the voucher, you may, if the airline closes down, then you will have lost the right to refund and you might not be covered at all by the travel insurance. Okay, so these are the things you need to consider. How strong is the airline? Will offering me a voucher be helpful or not? Will it be make it, making it worse? So how does it work? Okay, so this is before travel. So for now, you need to think about these things and consider whether the option works for you or not. Medical expenses, well, we have with medical expenses is that the policies such as travel insurance that were purchased, they, and when the COVID-19 became a known event, they may not cover medical expenses. So insurers need to look at the policy wording and provide guidance. But for you as a client, okay, usually the COVID is not included as a clear exclusion so it should be covered for your past trips, travel, but right now you have to be careful with the reopening of the borders because right now there are travel advisory against this all over, everywhere. All right, so anybody has any question? If you have questions, you can type them here on the right and we'll try to answer them for you. Now, after the travel, okay, after travel, what are the effects on policies? What happened or what is the effect on policies? So companies, they've imposed a lot of restrictions on future cover so they can avoid the coronavirus related claims. Okay, and we have the cancel for any reason before. Now cancel for any reason cover was a very popular cover, which you will get a full refund or like a full claim because of the reasoning, reason of cancellations. They cost more and you can cancel your policy for any reason and get a partial refund or a full refund, depends on the company. Now we will see disappearance of these policies. This will not be provided anymore. There is even, it goes as far to some insurance companies, especially in the UK, I've seen one insurer, they specifically were like, don't buy a policy from us. It's because we will not cover you for anything. So it goes to, as, to that extent, being that transparent. Okay. What covers that, what are the covers that did not change are as follows. The baggage, if you have baggage, it's um, lost, 
stolen damage. These are things that are not related to the virus. Okay, so there are personal items as well. If your policy covers for employment layoffs, okay, so it provides for employment layoffs. So for prepaid non-refundable trip payments, deposits because of a termination or, uh, or unemployment, then they can be covered as well. Missed connection because of the cost to catch up with the remaining trip or your agenda or flight here also will be covered as well. Financial default, session of operations, the coverage kicks in. Trip cancellation, if the trip is canceled. For illness, injury, death, other specific reasons, okay, not the corona, other specific reasons, it will be covered. And we have travel delay, okay, meals and accommodations. If the trip is delayed for a certain amount of time, usually there is a specific time, six to 12 hours. And we have also trip interruption. If it's interrupted again for illness, injury, or death, then that's the same case. These are the covers that have not changed. So now for future travel, you have to look at whether the policy will contain these covers, whether it will provide additional covers. You have to be careful with, with policies that say they do cover corona. They can be fraudulent policies. All right, let's go on to the next slide. We have samples here, picked out samples for you from the UK, how the regulator or how insurers responded in the UK with regards to the policy cover. What are they doing or how are things they're doing? We have the FSA, as we said, the Financial Conduct Authority. Okay. Um, the Financial Conduct Authority, again, same thing when it comes to travel insurance. They did not give a clear guideline or a clear order what should have been done. But what they have said is that, okay, you have to, as an insurer, communicate clearly any exclusions to your customers okay, or affected, even for travel booked in the future, you communicate clearly, this is your responsibility, you have to communicate clearly to your customers, whether they will be covered or not, okay, again, compassionately, time, time sensitive matter. And if a claim arises after the new renewal date, then please be fair with your customers, taking their individual circumstances into account, including that the policyholder is given a reasonable expectation that cover will continue. So they want the cover to be there, but what they're doing is that they are leaving it to each insurer to decide whether to provide cover or not, and consider the original policy wording. So in a way, they're indirectly telling insurers, pay the claim, but we're not ordering you to do so. And we have here many travel insurers, they've committed, okay, they've committed to helping their customers, even relaxing the restrictions related to the medical certifications. So it depends on the insurer, the way, the image they want to give, how many claims are they willing to take? So for you, it depends on your insurer, how, how, you, how much you trust them, how much you, um, you rely on their decisions, whether they will be taking it, doing this fairly or not. So this is something that you have to decide, okay? So for now, if you're thinking about traveling, Okay, on your next trip, you need to pay particular attention to the details in the policy to make sure you'd be covered if something happens or not. So be careful when you are purchasing a travel insurance policy in relation to this. Now we'll move on to the final part, which is the business interruption insurance. 
So if you have business interruption cover or a policy existing, okay, if, if you have a business and you're interested in buying a policy or if you have a existing policy, you will need to think about these things that we will discuss right away. So we have a lot to talk about about business interruption. So usually the policy has a cover called the material damage provision. How does the material damage provision work? Okay, the material damage provision, how does it work? So for, for customers, usually when you have a business, the first thing you think about is buying fire insurance or property insurance. So you're buying fire, okay, or property. And also with the cover, there might be a business interruption cover to come with it. Now, if you have a material damage provision or clause in your policy, you have to be careful because usually what happens is that the business interruption cover will only be paid if you have this or the reason that caused the claim is a fire, a theft, a natural or a physical damage to your property. Okay, so the existence of property damage where uh, in place, cover in place where claim is paid or liability is admitted for such damage. Now, here usually businesses, they buy it as part of their property insurance so with the corona, the situation is completely different because it's not a fire, it is not a flooding, it is not a theft. It is something that's causing business interruption, but there's maybe no physical damage to the premises or to your shop or business. So here, insurance companies, they will have to look at how is their wording, especially with regards to corona and causing business interruption. Okay, some policies, what they will say is that, okay, so you're one of the lucky people. If you bought this, as we call an extension, that you cannot use your premises because of a lockdown imposed by government or regulatory body. So let's take an example of the barber shops, hairdressers. They were on lockdown maybe for two months here in Bahrain. This is business interruption. No customers are allowed to come. The services that they can offer outside of a premises or through delivery are very limited. So there is a business interruption that has occurred here. There is a claim, but whether their policy covers or not, they have to look at the wording. If it says that any lockdown because of a government imposed regulation, then they can get cover and compensation for it. If it doesn't say that, then the government, the insurer will not provide for such cover. Okay, so first thing we look at is the material damage provision, whether it has, it's there or not, and how does it operate to the existing policy. Now for the clauses, the specified disease clause, there is one clause that is specific to or let's say it's the most relevant to Corona. This call, clause is called the Specified Diseases Clause. It's relevant to hotels, restaurants, schools, and private hospitals, and food processing risks. The typical policy wording would include specified disease, food poisoning, vermin, pest, defective sanitation, murder, or suicide. Now, we are focusing only on the specified disease aspect. So what it says is any specified disease occurring within five miles of the premises. Okay, and this is especially a UK wording here in Bahrain, it's a little bit different. So you will see that there is a list of, list of um, diseases. List of diseases, we have the acute encephalitis, poliomyelitis, anthrax, cholera, it's a long list that is usually specified. 
So if the clause specifically says that Corona has, been, has to be named there in order for cover to be effective, then the policy will pay. So the UK, for example, who sets this list of diseases? It is the government. So in the UK, if you have a policy for business interruption from the UK, the government will set this specific wording. The government will specifically put on this wording for the cover to be effective, um, to be covered. But if the insurers are deciding, then also here there might be changes. So this is where the clause is specifically stating the name of the disease. However, there are some wordings where the clause is there, but it does not specify the disease. So it's called a non-specified basis. And here, business interruption will be as a result, a direct result of the disease affecting the business. So in such a case, under Corona, it will be covered. Okay, under Corona, it will be covered. So again, specify disease clause, especially for hotels, restaurants, schools, private hospitals, they would have this clause, but whether it specifies the disease, Corona is not there, so not covered, but if the disease is not specified, Corona can be covered and you can claim for business interruption um, from your insurer. We have another clause that is relevant, which is the denial of access. Denial of access. Denial of access. It, here, what it means is there, um, there might be a prevention or restriction of access by police, government, or other competent authority due to an emergency event within one mile of the premises that causes a danger or disturbance. So let's say, for example, here at the BIBF, there has been a building next to us that they say there might, they might have corona and they had to shut it down completely. So it means they also shut down our area entirely to contain the disease. Makes more sense maybe in bigger countries where they shut down an entire town. So there is no access to our premises. Nor can anybody come and visit or whatever. So in such a case, access is denied, people cannot come in, so I might lose profit as a business. Here they call it a non-damage cover. What is non-damage? Compared to the material damage provision, you don't require physical damage to claim. We don't mean like usually, okay, sometimes denial of access can happen if there was a big theft or there was a suicide or whatever and they had to shut down the entire area here. In the case of shutdown because of Corona, it would be a non-damage cover. There is no physical damage to the premises. So usually a lot of policies, they require there to be an outbreak at the premises or some close proximity of the business premises to have a claim. So here, when it comes to denial of access, you can try with your insurer. It could be covered under the circumstances that we have here, if you have such a clause in your policy. The UK, they have released some figures, facts or figures like estimates to the total payout that will happen in the business interruption cover. And it's around 900 million okay, or $1.75 billion. And it is backing the FSA process the, look at the amount of money, the estimate of how much will be paid for business interruption claims just because of this, especially in the UK, everything is usually, everybody walks. So people not going out, there is a huge number of losses because of this, shutting down places. So things like that make this not pay, make the business lose their profits, lose their money. So they will not be able to um, recover that amount and therefore they will claim as a business policy. Now in the UK what is going on? Why we look at the UK because usually they have their leading in terms of these covers. So as we see also the bigger the country the more complex it is, the more difficult it is. The vast major majority of the policies they do not cover pandemics. 
Okay, Ma vast majority of policies do not cover pandemics and the government has confirmed it will not seek to amend contracts. Same issue with the travel, with the medical, maybe with the life as well. The government is not enforcing any regulations on insurers that they have to pay. So recently there was a debate between customers and insurers that insurers should pay for these. They should pay for the cost of business interruption because this is considered business interruption and they were looking at the regulator to force people or force the insurer to pay for such claims. However, what the regula regulator did is that they didn't interfere. What they said is that they will support any process that provides clarity and certainty. And certainty. So there's just a guidance. You need to inform your customers, be compassionate, understand, etc. But there is no enforcement of the cover because they don't want the backlash also from the insurers. So it depends on country to country. The situation differs from place to place. And especially for business interruption, then looking at the UK, because this is where the practice is the most. In the US, they're not paying at all. They're not providing such cover for such claims. So it's interesting to see how insurance, how the corona changed the insurance cover everywhere around the world. And any new policies going forward, we expect that there will be a lot of changes to the wording. Maybe Corona will be excluded altogether. Maybe such clauses will disappear completely. Or maybe they will put that there and force the insurers. So regulators will enforce that insurers have to pay. Okay, so we will come to the final part of the session, which is I wanted to share with you the five top five COVID-19 scams related to insurance fraud. So now obviously when there is a time of panic, there is issues going on or the country is under lockdown, people look for information everywhere, looking for a relief everywhere. So you have to be careful with the fraud or the scams that can happen. That could result into cases where people might try to defraud you or take money from you for what is going on. Okay, so they're trying to abuse this situation to their advantage. So we have here a number of situations or cases which we have to be careful about. We have fake corona insurance, fake corona insurance. What will happen is a health agent will call you and they will tell you that, okay, we have low priced insurance um, for medical or for travel, anything that happens to you. We will cover you against Corona, 100% guaranteed. You have to be careful with these because here they are trying to defraud you. Always check with your insurer first, okay? Check with your insurer first and make sure that it's a validated policy, okay? Then we have canceled health insurance. So you can get fake calls, fake calls warning that your health insurance was canceled or fake links saying that, okay, just come here and we'll issue a policy in one minute. These you have to be careful with because they're most likely to, they're trying to steal your personal information. Okay. So something like that, you have to be careful because they are almost, they're trying to steal your information. Okay, again, abusing the situation, the panic to their advantage. Okay, we have also corona medicine or tests. Be careful because fake drugs, fake vaccines. Now there's all this talk about a vaccine that will save us. So things like that, we have to be careful with them. And we have to make sure that we understand that there is no cure yet, okay? Our government did not, especially in Bahrain, they did not recognize a clear cure, a clear vaccine. So be careful with these herbal remedies, fake drugs, you have to pay a crazy amount of money to acquire them. This does not exist, there is no cure yet, okay? 
we have afterwards senior scams especially with seniors they want to it's always they are subject to stealing like their identity so the same issue here we have also is that people will try or you'll see some scammers they will try to give free tests at senior centers try to take information from the take the information from the seniors use their information their social security numbers and things like that to their benefit again trying to steal your identity okay or stealing your like your elderly loved one's identity last thing we have bogus travel insurance now with the rise in the in the in the opening up of countries we've seen for example greece is opening up tourism completely flights are going to open up because the economy cannot handle it anymore So what happens is that they will claim that they will cover you against Corona for your trip cancellations altogether. So what will happen is that um, if the policy clearly states it's excluded, then you will know already where your situation stands. Don't buy from untrusted sources, okay? If you're already dealing with an insurer, okay? You're already dealing with an insurer, you're or you are already dealing with an insurer. Go through that insurer. Don't try new insurers that you are not aware of. Okay, so things like that you have to be careful because at times like these, people want to reduce the panic situation and respond to the like reduce that feeling. So you might respond to some people who are trying to scam you. Be careful, we don't know what will happen. The situation is still changing. It's still evolving. We cannot even predict what's gonna happen next week. So all our plans are up in the air, but it's important that we stay safe. We understand our cover, what we are covered for, what we are not covered for, and things like that. So, um, I will recap now what we have covered for those who came in late. So we talked about medical insurance. We looked at what medical expenses can you incur because of the coronavirus? What is covered? What is not covered? This all depends obviously on the government, how they're handling it, how your insurer will step in in place of the government for things that are not covered and will your policy tackle this or not, things that you should ask about, things that you should check, understand the testing process, understand the treatment process, ask questions, find out all the information so that you have a full picture and make a decision if you are buying a new policy. Same thing with life insurance. If you have an existing policy, look at the policy wording read it on your own if you are not sure approach your insurer they are there for you to help you at these times this is where insurer's role comes into place so look at your savings policy if you have some form of guarantee keep it because you're not going to lose the amount of money you've put in if there is no guarantee look at your options available because the cover was designed for you to get to enjoy your policy over a period of 40 years and then protect your loved ones in case of an unfortunate death. And we also talked about the travel insurance. Now travel's gonna probably pick up again, we don't know. But if you're thinking about traveling, clarify what is covered, what is not covered. Maybe an extra cover that you will need to look at is the repatriation cost, cost of bringing you back to the country in case borders close, in case the governments are not going to pay for that because you traveled at your own risk. So things like that you need to consider and think about just in case. And how likely or how dangerous is that country and whether your insurer will step in to cover you for it or not. And lastly, we looked at business interruption so business interruption, we looked at the policy wordings that can affect you and it's applicable, especially if you have a business or you're already working at an office and you expect an influx of customers every month. 
Now, because of that, you don't have any customers coming in. You have to change the way you work, things like that. If you're gonna do all of these things, so how will your policy take place or how will it come and step in to provide the cover that you need? Okay, check for the material damage provision clause, specified diseases, denial of access, all of these clauses will affect the way you operate. Okay, and lastly, we have all of the fraud issues that can happen based on the, because there's a panic about the situation, uncertainty, and clarity of information, how all of these things will affect you as a, as a customer. Don't let yourself be the victim of false information. Do your research. Always go back to your insurer and ask questions. What is covered, what is not covered? This is where insurance comes place. This is the role of insurers. And this is why we're having such workshops to educate people, to help people understand and reduce this kind of uncertainty. Okay, so now I will leave the floor open for anyone who has any question, anything you wanna ask, and we will conclude the session.